Okay, welcome back. So this lesson is one that I'm pretty excited about making. I hope that you enjoy it. We're going to be writing our very first Express app. Before we actually do that, I wanna take 30 seconds. It will be really short, I promise. Just to review two important topics, how an existing app works, so the dog demo app that I've already shown, and then the basics of the HTTP request response lifecycle. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to begin by talking about HTTP requests and responses. So remember, when I go to a URL like google.com and I hit enter, I'm asking for a web page. I send an HTTP request, and that request has a particular verb or type. Is it a get request or a post request or some of the other ones we haven't really seen yet? And then I potentially send some data along with the request. And the server that receives my request, the server that I'm requesting, Google has some code that decides what page to send me back. So it sends me the Google homepage, or maybe it sends me the Google login page or the Gmail page, or a page that says my password is incorrect. Whatever it is, the server is deciding what to send back, and then it responds with a response. So I send a request, server side code figures out what I'm asking for, and then does some stuff, and then sends me back a response. That is fundamentally what we're going to use Express to do. So I have this dog demo app that you may remember it's very, very forgettable, just a simple app that has a database that we've connected to and a user can view all the dogs in the database. Each dog only has a name and a breed, entirely useless, but it is nice and simple and I think it's a good illustration of how Express works. So I have some code in here, things like requiring Express and requiring the database, but most importantly are these three chunks and these are called routes and we'll be writing our own routes in just a few minutes. Routes are the code that are responsible for listening and receiving those requests that I talked about and then deciding what to send back. So in this case, we have code that is listening for a request to the home page just to slash. Then we have some code that's listening for a get request to slash dogs. And we have some other code that's listening for a post request on slash create dogs. And then inside of the routes, we're running some code. In this case, we're just rendering the home page. So that's going to respond with the contents of our homepage, which is another file somewhere else. In this one, when someone asks for slash dogs as a get request, we find all the dogs, and then we render the dogs page and send all the data for the dogs along with that. And when someone creates a dog by sending a post request to slash create dog, we're going to add a dog to the database and then redirect them back to the dogs page where they can view all the dogs. So don't get too intimidated by the syntax and all the different pieces. We'll be introducing this one little bit at a time. But the very first thing that everything starts from is this idea of a route. And routes are just bits of code that will run some other code depending on the request that is received on our server. So then that brings me to the next point, which is starting our server. So we have to run the file, which is called app.js, node app.js, just like that. And then I need to go, in this case, to port 3000, which will actually be different for us in Cloud9. But if I go to port 3000 and I refresh, I get the home page because I made a request to slash. And there's some code that when I make a request to slash, sends me the home page. Same thing if I go to slash dogs. There's another bit of code that is listening for a request as a get request to slash dogs, and it sends me all the dogs back. And then lastly, I can make a new dog and hit submit. And that sends a post request to slash create dog and this code is run. All right, so that's all I wanted to review before we move on to writing our own code. The one big takeaway from all of that, if you just totally slept through it, the one big takeaway is routes. Routes are important. Routes are how we listen for particular requests and then run some other code depending on the request that we get. Okay, so now it's the moment that you've been waiting for. Hopefully you've been waiting for this. We're going to go ahead and create our first Express app. So I'm gonna go back to Cloud9 and I'm going to make a new directory. I'm just gonna call it first Express app and CD into that. And then I'm going to make a new file, app.js. And then we'll open that up and we'll start just console.logging our express app will go here and save and let's just run it and all right we get our console.log so now what we need to do is install express and if i go back to the express docs you can see we just run npm install 
express. And I did mention in the last video that we are going to talk about dash dash save in this video, and we are, but I'm going to keep it until the very end. It doesn't make a difference at all in the functionality of express. So we're going to leave it until later in the video. So we want npm install express. And if we type ls, of course, there isn't a node modules directory yet. But if we do npm install express, we'll take a moment. This is definitely a bigger download than the other things that we've installed so far. I now have, if I type ls, a node modules directory. If I re uh, refresh my file tree, you see node modules. I have express. And inside of node modules, there are a lot of directories, a lot of files. And this is all of the logic, all of the code that makes the framework that we don't have to write ourselves. So we'll close out of that. And the next thing that we need to do, of course, is require express in our application. So we'll do var express equals require express, just like that. And that will then import the module express. But unlike the earlier libraries or packages we've seen, like catme, where we said var catme equals require catme, and then to use it, all we had to do was say catme. In this case, catme only has one thing that it does, one simple function, just like knock knock jokes only had one function as well. Well, express has lots and lots of different methods, so we can't just execute express like this to use it, although we will be executing it and saving it to a variable, which most people call app. So var express equals require express. That just includes all the contents of this express directory. And then we execute it and save it to a variable called app. And everything that we do with express will be app dot and then some method that express comes with. Now that we have express installed and initialized, it's always a good idea just to make sure that it works. So let's try running node app.js. Nothing should happen. As long as we don't get an error, that means that we're good to go. Now we're going to define our first route. We're going to make a very simple application. When you go to slash, you're going to get a message that says, hi. And when you go to slash goodbye, or let's just do bye, you'll get a message that says, goodbye. And then we'll also do one more, which is when you go to slash dog, you'll get a message that says, meow. So three different routes, three different places we can make a request to. And we can get three different responses depending on where we request. So the syntax for defining a route looks like this. We'll start with this first one, the hi there. And we write app dot get. And app dot get takes two different parameters. The first one is the URL or the path, which is slash in this case, because we're trying to make a route when a user makes a get request, which is what the get here means, we will see app.post later on, and even app.delete, and patch, and put, some of the other HTTP verbs, but get and post are the most common. So app.get, when a get request is made, to slash, which is also called the root path, or just the root, then we want this code to run, which is a callback function, and this callback function takes two different arguments, request and response, Again, those are whatever we want them to be called. It's totally up to us, but you'll see this most often. And I think, in fact, on the official Express docs, that's what they use, rec and res. Some people will actually type it all out, request and response, but rec and res is much more common to see. So rec and res are actually objects. Inside of this function, request is an object that contains all the information about the request that was made that triggered this route. And response will contain all of the information about what we're going to respond with. So I'll show you that in a little bit. We'll console.log it. We'll see what it looks like. But to start, we're going to write res.send hi there. And this is just a way of responding with some text. But if we go to the root page of our app, once we serve it, once it's started, then we expect to get the text hi there printed out to us in the browser. This isn't going to work just yet, though. Because if I run this, node app.js, nothing happens. Because we're missing one really important part of code. In Express, we actually have to write the code to tell it to listen for different requests. To do that, Express gives us a method called listen. So we'll write app.listen. And then we need to provide it the port to listen on. And I'll show you in my example here. I was listening on port 3000. 
But because we're on cloud nine, we have to do things a little bit differently. We need to listen on process.env.port. So all of this code will actually just return a number, like 3000, except it returns the number of Cloud9 server that we have to use. So this is a variable, it's called an environment variable, and the environment variable that we're working with is called port. So this will return a number, but we don't hard code the number in. It's coming from Cloud9. There's one other piece of information that we should pass in, which is process.env.ip. And this is a line that you can just copy and paste from app to app. We'll be using it at the bottom of every single application that we make with Express. So it's one of those just cookie cutter lines that we need to use. So this tells Express to listen on a particular port that Cloud9 wants it to and a particular IP that Cloud9 expects it to as well. So to summarize, we initialized Express and saved it to the app variable. We defined a single route. When we make a get request to slash, we should see hi there sent back in the response in our browser. And just defining the route isn't enough. We then have to tell the app to listen on a particular port and IP address. And now we just need to start the server with node app.js that will run the entire contents of the file. You'll see our cursor changes. We can't actually type commands anymore because our server has started. There is one small thing we can do to improve this. So I'm gonna control C out of that. And we can pass in callback function to app.listen as well. And inside of here, we'll just do console.log Surfer has started, just like that. And save, and now I'm gonna clear and start the server again. And we get this message that says server has started, just so that it's clearer what's happening with our console. Now to visit this site, unlike the local version that I showed with Sublime and the dog demo, where I went to localhost colon 3000, Cloud9 actually hosts it online at your own URL, and you can find that by clicking on preview and click on Preview Running Application. And that will open up a new tab. And if we want to, we can just use the tab here. I prefer to copy the URL and open up a new tab and paste that in so that I can actually just use it in the browser without having to go through Cloud9's fake browser. So I'll close out of that. And you'll see though, my URL is the name of my workspace, webdevbootcamp dash my username dot c9.io. So whatever you're serving in that workspace, which right now is this one file, app.js, instead of first express app, will be at the URL that is given to you for free automatically when you create a Cloud9 workspace. And more exciting than that, we can see that we get, hi there, it's working. I'm making a request to the root of the server, just slash, and I'm getting, hi there. And if we try doing something else like this, you'll get a message that says cannot get that URL, this path that I added. So let's add in another route now. It's the exact same pattern. Let's do the by route. So we want an app.get slash by, and then our function request response, just like that. And we will send res.send goodbye, just like that, and save that. Now if we go to slash by and hit enter, you'll see that it still doesn't work. And that's because we have to restart the server. So anytime we make some changes, we need to restart the server for now. I'm gonna show you a tool that will help us so that we don't have to constantly restart it. But for now, we need to do node app.js again, save, refresh. This time, if we go to slash by, I now get my goodbye message. And if I go to the root, I get hi there. So let's do one more now. Let's go back. So app.get slash dog, our callback with request and response. And then inside of that, we're going to respond res.send meow. What was I thinking? Why did I say meow? All right, well, I'm gonna go with it. Definitely should not be meow. But if I start my server again, or restart it, control C to quit, and I hit the up arrow and I run node app.js again, and I go back here, I refresh, and now I go to slash dog, I get meow. And I can go to slash bye and get goodbye, and I can go to slash nothing and get hi there. So that's all we're doing for this very first Express app. Before we move on, I'm going to open up Postman and test our application out. So we're going to make a get request, and we'll do it to the slash dog route just to test it out. 
And rather than localhost 3000 slash dog, we need to make a request to this URL slash dog. So I'm going to copy this and go back to Postman and just paste that URL in. And before we do anything else, I'm gonna resize this and resize this window as well. And we can close or shrink this down a bit. So I'm going to make a request to this webdevbootcamp-learnwithcult.c9.io slash dog. Of course, this URL will match your own Cloud9 account. And what I'm going to do is inside of my app.dog, I'm going to add a console.log. And it's just going to say, someone made a request to slash dog. And we'll save that. And this console.log is going to appear down here. It's not going to appear in the browser inside of the JavaScript debugging console, the front end console. It appears in the node console here that we have started by running node app.js. So if I restart the server, and I'll start by just showing you if I move this over here and I refresh the page, let me go to another page and refresh. And now if I go to slash dogs or dog, watch down here, it says someone has made a request to slash dog. So that's just to show you that that code is triggered as soon as we make a request. And it's not only triggered by our browser, but we can also trigger it by using Postman, which I'll show now. So all I need to do is hit enter here or send. And we got another, someone made a request to slash dog, but also a full screen Postman now. Let's look at what was sent back. So the body is just meow. Again, don't know what I was thinking by doing meow, but we got some text back, meow, and we can do the same thing by going to just the root path and sending a request and we get hi there. And we can also do slash by, and we also get the same thing. So this is to show you that these requests, doesn't matter where they originate from. If it's from a browser, a phone with a browser, if it's from a terminal somewhere or something like Postman, it doesn't matter. Our server is just listening for any request that's a get request to three different routes, dog, by, and the root route. And when it gets one of those requests, it will then respond with some simple text. All right, so that's all I wanted to cover in this first intro to Express app. I know it's really, really simple. It hasn't amounted to much yet as an application, but trust me, the, the order that we're going in is very, very deliberate. We're starting small and we're going to add one piece at a time. The next few pieces that we'll add are responding with HTML files. So rather than res.send, there's another method that we'll use to send an entire file of HTML back. And we'll also introduce a concept called route variables or path variables. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.